The guest has arrived. The host is prepped and ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this is One on One with Bill Alexander. Hi, everyone. Yours truly, William Eric Alexander. All my friends call me Bill, and welcome to today's edition of One on One with Bill Alexander. I have a treat for you today. I found some music a while back. I was doing a Thanksgiving program for Hall of Fame Music Radio at hofmradio.com, and I was looking for food-themed songs. So I went in, and I was looking for Let's Turkey Trot by Little Eva. Well, that isn't what came up. What came up was Let's Turkey Trot by the Dolly Rots. Well, guess what? I fell in love with the Dolly Rots when I heard it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play one of their songs right now that's one of their newest ones called Just Like All the Rest. And then we'll have the Dolly Rots right after that here on One on One with Bill Alexander. I'm talking to Kelly and Lewis. Kelly and Lewis, you are the Dolly Rots. How are you doing today? We're good. We're good. We're busy. We're happy. <laughs> I, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. So explain to me the name Dolly Rots. Well, you're the Dolly and you're the Rot. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, well, that's the I answer. Guess, you know, because she has a sweet voice and he played hard with the guitar. So it was like Dolly Rot. That's you know pretty what? much it. You just, I think he just explained it perfectly. I don't know if I can put it any better than that. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, the genesis of the name, kind of, that was the concept. So how yeah. long have you guys been performing? Well, uh, so almost... we're at about our, we're about at our 20 year anniversary. Yeah. In um, January. We, we kind of started the band as a joke. Okay. Back in college. No noise um, we actually, the first band name was called No Chef. Ready? Doesn't make any sense. Thank you. And, um, and then we, an I'm gonna move so then back. we, um, yeah, move that thing. So then we, yeah, we started the band in Florida, in Sarasota, Florida. And um, in January 2002, after only playing seven shows, we thought uh -huh. we were like so good that we should move to LA. <laughs> gotcha. 
<laughs> which completely naive, really young and dumb and really ambitious. So we just like packed up our guitars and our animals and her station wagon and drove to LA and found an apartment in Koreatown and um, just started playing shows around Los Angeles. And things just kind of went from there, you know, like, um, it, it was never, our intention was never to be doing the band for 20 years, you know? Okay. It was like, let's move to LA. Let's do this for a year. Let's see how it goes. Maybe we'll go to grad school. Establish residency, you know? go to grad school for cheaper. Yeah. We right. kind of wanted to just move out to California to go to school. You know, I, I was looking at med schools and she was looking at like grad school. I don't know. So, yeah. um, but things kind of just took on a life of their own and here we are. <laughs> yeah. So how I found you guys was totally by accident, which is really interesting because I do an oldies program on a uh, oldies station. It's online and also locally where I'm at. And I was looking for music dealing with uh, related to food for Thanksgiving. It was a theme oh. related. Ah. And I came across Turkey Trot. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going what is this i've heard the original what am i listening to well yeah. i heard it and i fell in love with it because i've never heard someone take and if you want to call it a, a punk rock style to a classic like that and you've done a lot of covers to a lot of other classics yeah which is quite interesting well you know that song it, it fell right. In, we're, we're very influenced by 60s girl groups, you know, the whole Phil Spector sound and all that. Um, Brill building, you know, yeah. that whole genre is highly influential on us, mainly because it lends so well to her voice. Yeah, okay. and I, we grew up in Florida. I grew up listening to the oldie stations here, which were amazing when I was younger. And so I think, you know, a lot of my melody ideas and everything are informed by that era of music as yeah. well. And so that that song, actually, we but did that it because, one. Yeah, <laughs> we did that one because Rodney Bingenheimer. It was a birthday present to Rodney <laughs> Bingenheimer. He asked us for about six, eight, six to eight years. Yeah. Like, please do turkey <laughs> chop. Please do turkey <laughs> chop. And so finally, one year, I was like, happy early birthday, Rodney. Here you go. We did it. Yeah. And he's so excited. So that he gets credit for that. So we do, um, we, we do that. That's a large component of this new release. You know, it's like taking songs that either influenced us or kind of tells a story in some chapter of our life or was, in, you know, important to us. And then, um, you know, we would just cover them. And, you know, it's over the years, we kind of just amassed this collection of stuff. And we never really intended on releasing it. It was just kind of like, we'd give it to fans for free or we just do it for fun or whatever. Yeah. And so I guess it's just getting a proper release now. Another one that I thought was interesting too, is you did the cover of Melanie's Brand New Key. And about a year ago, I actually talked to Melanie about her music and that song, and she hates it because she felt that that song is the one that everybody knows her for, but she's done yeah. so many other better, better yeah. music and writings yeah. that she didn't yeah. feel that it was fair. But as she said, she laughed all the way to the bank and she uh, is able to capitalize on it. Yeah. But you yeah. did that. You guys put a, a different spin on the music and when you when you do your music videos, do, does the music come first, or you have the idea for the video then the music? Oh, definitely the the music comes first. Um, I'd say, I'd say, <laughs> did you hear that scream? That's yes, I, I heard that scream. Yeah, yeah. And for that's the audience good. that's watching this, they have two small children that are <laughs> they 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 basically locked them out of a room with a memory foam mattress <laughs> cover somewhere i don't know they're downstairs um what was i even talking about? they're five and eight <laughs> they're five and eight five and um, eight so what were we talking about the music what videos talking? when oh, you come the, with the ideas yeah yeah so the music videos happen way after the fact usually and and they're never it's never been i mean i guess it could be in the future but it's never thus far been the case where we conceptualize something and then create music to match it Okay. We have had situations where people have approached us and asked us to create music for a specific animated thing or a concept, and then we we just 
do it as an assignment kind of yeah but our album songs usually they start as instrumentals and then we just live with them for a while like you drive around with them or whatever and let the words kind of come to grunt us. out melodies that become <laughs> words and then they become songs and then and then that in turn becomes like the soundtrack to a video and you do the video based on first of all what's accessible to you okay <laughs> you know? um you know, there, there are a handful of directors and creative people that we know that uh, are good at that sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, we'll just come up with a concept and, and, and do it. But that, that's usually way after the fact. And a lot of, most of the time it's after release, you know? So at that point, we've already been playing the song live. It's already been out in the ether. We've gotten right. feedback about it. And you kind of have a sense of the way that it's making people feel. So, yeah, it, it, and, it, and it, it's interesting. Now, the other one um, that I guess um, was recently released is just like all the rest, yeah, which is an animated yeah. video. Yeah, that and and the funny thing is, I like I said, I have a daughter that's fourteen years old. I played it for her the other day. I said these guys are coming on the program. I want to hear this, and she goes, "It sounds like it belongs on Disney Channel," and I'm going. Yeah okay she goes 90s disney channel and i'm going i get it i said that's and it, it. Was. <laughs> and it was yeah it's like that that song is super saccharine on purpose yeah we okay. wrote it with friends yeah that's a co-write with our friend Jarrett from bowling for soup okay and, and then their producer bowling for soups producer and our our, our sometimes or oftentimes producer linus of hollywood so that song was written from the standpoint of let's just write the like ultimate pop song i guess with, with a with, silly <laughs> cheesy just fun what is the first lyric that comes to mind yeah. Yeah, like every line isn't like overthought it's just no like, i think most, it took 15 minutes the song oh, really was, was oh yeah we did it on zoom yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was just Cause, like this it because it, it, it is it's really good and it's really catchy um <laughs> and, and I actually have it in my playlist now, which is, again, for a 55-year-old listening to this, it's kind of <laughs> unique, I guess. But You know what, though? No, it's, it's not, strangely enough. Like, really? I, I feel like, yeah, what we do, we have, like, a few distinct groups of fans, and there is definitely, like, a 50 and over crowd at every show, and they're like... I just, I like, love it. I like, I don't know why I'm here, but somehow your music <laughs> is something I can relate to. And I think it's because of the, our influences tend to run older than right. us. Yeah. Like our influences. I mean, like our punk rock influences are late seventies punk rock, not, yes. you know. And, and our, and our rock and roll influences, like we already mentioned the grill building, the girl group thing, but yeah. you know, it's like early, early Beatles, not even late Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, you know, I listen to a lot of rock, like Eddie Cochran and like Rockabilly and mm -hmm. uh, Chuck Berry and, you know, all that stuff. I mean, 1957, 58, 59, 60, there was, those were good years for rock and roll. Oh, definitely. And, <laughs> so, I, and I can understand that because that is what attracts me to it. It has a new feel, but you're taking a classic and doing something different to it. So a lot of the songs that you've covered, I know all the words to. I just may not know the arrangement. So once I figure out what the arrangement is, then I'm able to get involved with it. And I'll be honest with you that I, there's a few of them that you do that I turn up really loud when I'm driving. So <laughs> it, it is, it, <laughs> it, is, it is kind of cool to be able to do that. Um, so you have the new album out right now, which is down the rabbit hole. And Looking through it, there's one on here. Um, you did uh, the do Ron Ron, except yeah. you backed it with I want to be sedated, which I thought was very interesting. <laughs> it's the same song, it's the same song music. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, yeah, so that's why we did that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also um, your version with no a, that is the version that he's talking about oh it is, has the sponge in it, it has the sponge in it. oh i wasn't sure if we put that in <laughs> there did. no okay. that's why this one's new oh uh, <laughs> okay um, what do you mean that's why this one's new so, okay so the the do ron ron and i want to be sedated dual cut like medley cover yes was originally on our 2014 album barefoot and pregnant that's the okay. dog's 
Really bad. Yeah, I realize that. Um, however, there was an alternate version. Give him something that doesn't squeak. The kids found him <laughs> under the bed. Oh, I see. Uh, however, there was an alternate version where, as a joke, we decided to cover, I don't know, this is an obscure reference, but there was a SpongeBob SquarePants episode <laughs> where SpongeBob, where there's a song that plays and it's SpongeBob doing the sponge, right? Okay. And it's like, it's sung by it's like Black, Black Dahlia of Black the from dwarves. The dwarves sings it. It's like the <laughs> which is very weird. So it's the dwarves meets SpongeBob meets like this song, which also happens to have the same structure as the other two songs. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're three they're, musically the same song they're all the whole the same way through. Song. So it's like I want to uh, the do run run and do run run. I do the sponge sponge sponge, and then I want to be, be sedated. sedated are all the same. <laughs> So we were like, all right, we'll just we'll do play them all. Why around. not? <laughs> um, the other one I thought was unique on this album is you did the cover of Earth Angel. And I never thought I would hear a punk version of Earth Angel, um, which is, is very interesting. Um, we, you know, that one, that was an example of one that we recorded like just kind of for fun and then never showed anyone. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't remember it was why. Those production guys, right? No. For publishing? No, we didn't. We Oh, well, there may have been a reason for it. I think it may have ended up on a list of songs that were requested by a publisher or something. Yeah. Okay. Occasionally we'll get messages from people that pitch music for licensing for TV or movies or yeah. whatever. And they'll give you songs, ideas that people are looking for. And I'm pretty sure that's what this one was. I well, think I ended up in a tv show too no that one didn't because it was one i agonized over and then never got a mix that i oh, liked oh dream no, lover was the tv a one. Great, you, i haven't heard that one yet i'm looking forward to that now yeah. so that one however was recorded when we were on joan jett's label on blackheart records yes so that one along with what was the other one we did we did dream lover and we happy did together. happy together mm -hmm. um okay and so they own the rights to those so those exist somewhere okay i don't, I don't know <laughs> so so yeah like i i think all that music from that era lends itself to being modernized and turned into like the style of music that we do naturally with, right like, like guitars and kind of a slicker modern production with loud drums and whatever um because structurally it's the same yeah. you know it's rock and roll so so you've been performing like you said for what 20 years now have you noticed a difference in your your fans the people that come see you are they still the same age group they're just getting older and bringing their kids with them or there is a lot of that yeah yeah um but our band has always been doing this there's always been a slow and steady growth. And so we're constantly bringing in new people. Okay. Yeah. Um, we just so finished shipping out all the stuff for the new album, which we did from downstairs right here in the, in the living room and kitchen. And it's wild because so many of the names we recognize because we've been doing this a while now. So it's like, oh, I've known him. It's He's like, well, yeah, him, we know this guy. <laughs> They're like friends you know? at this point. But then there were also so many new names that i haven't seen before and you know it's it's really cool that it it grows and changes and i think we keep those old fans too um and yeah they just bring new people yeah. bring their kids yeah it, i mean their it, parents. it really is a, at this point oh the dog is oh, going crazy oh, my gosh. What? we hit you in the head with the remote uh they're getting to the point where it's almost dinner time, so they're like lashing out. Um, gotcha. Grandma's coming with five guys, though, so they're gonna and eat. Any okay. Any uh, minute. <laughs> any minute, Grandma. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it is becoming multi generational, but then again, it always has been multi generational. Okay. Because we don't cuss, you know? We I don't noticed that. There, yeah, we don't get up there. She doesn't like pull her pants down, right? And flash her boobs, and yeah, and we're not up there trying to make a spectacle. Like we're gonna be tight, and we're gonna play a punk rock show 
but there's no reason yeah. to make it like it's not shock rock it's like you know, you know buzzcocks uh -huh. <laughs> or you know the ramones blondie right. like they're they're classy acts in their own ways and yes well, that's who we look or, up to. or like joan jett we've seen joan her, jett we've seen yeah her play a million times just by virtue of our relationship with her i mean sometimes we'll make a crass joke if the audience is right but it's not <laughs> part of our you know so, uh, it, we know who the audience is each night and we play to that yeah but in general well, parents feel comfortable bringing their kids well you, know? you opened up the door because i can never tell this sh story but i was once Joan Jett's chauffeur, just a little oh, yeah. <laughs> and awesome. I wasn't allowed to talk to her on the whole trip. No <laughs> oh way. God, really? I uh, was a college geez. student at a local university and she was doing a college tour. This was in the late 90s, mid nine oh. or no, I'm sorry, the late 80s. And oh, wow. um doing the tour and I had to go pick her up but we heard a story about two other college students that drove her to the airport but they kept talking to her and she got so annoyed with them that she told <laughs> one of the kids to get out on the side of the interstate and they drove her the rest of the way oh so my god I get told this story I'm terrified and I'm holding the steering wheel like this and the manager's in front seat he goes What's the problem? I said, I was told I wasn't allowed to make eye contact or I wasn't allowed to talk to her. He said, why? And I told him the story. Joan, the band that was with her, the performers were with her and the manager just busted out laughing. He yeah. goes, yeah, that's, you that's really believe that? No, 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 <laughs> I said, no. yes, I did. <laughs> I was going to say, I really have trouble believing the story. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's the sweetest, man. That's she, what I understand. She's the sweetest. And you know, I think sometimes that car ride is the only quiet you're going to get yeah. in your day. And that's probably just all it is. As a performer, as someone who, I, I mean, I haven't, I, we have, we're not like Joan Jett, but we, we do have we do engage with our audience. We talk mm -hmm. to people at the shows. We're around other bands. We're around for the whole show. We're watching from side stage. We're playing the show. But sometimes There's I hide in the bathroom, in the <laughs> dressing room for an hour. Because sometimes <laughs> you just need less sensory information. Right. And so I totally get it if, <laughs> if that yeah. may have happened once or twice. <laughs> to this, to this, I, I've been trying to get her on the program for the last two or three years, and I, I haven't had any luck because I want to tell her the story and I want to and, and I, I want to hear her response to it because that I can remember like it was yesterday. Funny. But that, that's, that's cool. you mentioned Joan Jett, you mentioned the Ramones. Do you feel that you've reached the, 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 your highest point or have you leveled out? when it comes to performing are you waiting to break that surface where you become a national name um i don't think we need to okay uh, yeah. you know in a in a weird like we used to you know when we first moved to la and we were like you know we were we had like major label demo deal and we, we were doing the whole thing and then we you know we, we did that whole like the radio push and we'd go to the top 40 station all that we did all that and at the end of it it's like we have reached a point in our i don't know if you want to call it a career i feel weird saying the word career associated that's with, what it with, is at this point with art <laughs> <laughs> but we've reached a point where this is our job we have a dedicated fan base that uh -huh. supports everything we do generally the people that like our band are cool nice people and we can tour comfortably with a small crew we can book tours whenever we want because there's always a door open for us we can release music however we want we can do it ourselves we can partner with labels like and we're in a comfortable position where we don't have to hire a army of people to help us and right. we also don't have to worry about answering a bunch of questions yeah. or having a bunch of middlemen yeah there was a time you know, you know like we don't we don't do management anymore no we don't need a manager like, we, we just, just want to do it ourselves you know I yeah mean, we have a publicist we have a booking agent and we have a lawyer that's all we really, really need. <laughs> no one we don't need anyone else in the mix and so we're at a very good place where that's that's where we are and if things continue to grow i mean i would like to be it playing, grows every year still somehow yeah i would like but. to be playing like performing art centers to people seated while i like do the bob dylan thing on an acoustic okay when i'm old yeah you know gotcha. that would be awesome but you know and yeah sure if we had a hit 
I'd, I'd, ride, do it. I'd ride that pony all, all <laughs> the way to the sunset, you know? Well, and we know, how to, we know how to do it, too, because yeah. we've already, already seen all this happen. But, I, you know, we don't, we don't do this with the intention of thinking, like, you know, oh, I wish we could get on I want to get famous. Warner Brothers or something. Right. Yeah, like, we've turned down met label deals yeah and even just recently within the past year we turned down a label deal yeah. like a like a decent one because we we know that it's better for us to retain our music and continue to uh just have the audience that we have in the end grow it ourselves we keep our money and we're in charge of it no that's good and that's, and that's well, the other thing i want to ask you too you mentioned your tours how did covid and the pandemic and the stay at home affect you over the last year and a half two years well, in our case, it did not affect us as negatively as people assume it would have. Yeah, okay. or, or maybe how it affected other bands. Yes. We, um, we started about nine years ago. Um, per, like, all the online shows kind of started back yeah. at that point. Yeah. Um, Stageit.com was this new thing. And I was pregnant and it was like, well, we might not be able to tour as often, especially this first year with a new baby. We don't know what it's going to yeah. be like. So we started playing these shows online. You know, we would do like all Ramon songs, all early Beatles, you yeah. know, it, it was really cool. Um, so we got but our fan base is used to us playing online. We've yeah. continued to do it for nine years. So that aspect so that of was like cool. performance like carried over. Yeah. You know, right. we, we were only playing online shows. And, and then, in addition to that, like we're self-sufficient in that we have a home studio. We can make music here. We don't have to go places to record. Okay. Yeah. Um, usually we'll cut all the basic tracks at home. We've got all the gear and whatever, send it off to get mixed or worked on. And in addition to that, Kelly has a radio show on a morning show on Sirius XM every oh, morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was kind of good because I've been doing it two years. So it was kind of good to get my legs before I had so, to do it while touring. <laughs> so so what channel are you on then? On um, Little Steven's Underground Garage and Little Steven's Coolest Channel. Okay. So, so I do the weekday morning show 4 to 8 a.m. every day. It's on wow. channel 21 on Sirius XM. Yeah. And then 721 is the new channel yeah. where she... I'm the only DJ on 721. She voices the <laughs> that station. That is awesome. So, um, no, and I will, I will tune into you tomorrow morning so I can hear it. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so did you always want to be in radio or did it just a uh, matter of factly just happen that way? I was going <laughs> to be an environmental scientist. I have a biology degree, <laughs> right. I have a bio degree and then, um, we did the band and then, we did, and then we accidentally did the band and then she accidentally became a DJ basically. Well, what happened was it was weird because we've been friendly with the station the station obviously is kind of part of, under the umbrella of the rest of Little Steven stuff. So Little right. Steven has a label that we work with, Wicked Cool Records. But he started mm -hmm. playing our music on Underground Garage when we were on Blackheart Records. They, they just posted a thing so. today that they made Because I'm Awesome, coolest song in the world in like 2007. Right? Yeah, so, so we, we, we have had... a relationship with them. Then they asked if we wanted to put out a single when we were on tour randomly yeah. so we started working with them more yeah. and then we were driving our kids to school one morning we we're listening to underground garage and there was no dj in the mornings it was just music programming and i was like man it's like i wish it was just a little more fun like it's just not happy enough for my morning literally literally that, day, the, that afternoon we got a call from the program director who we're friendly with because he does the label stuff too and he's <laughs> like hey would you want to audition because Stevie's over in England right now, and he thinks we need a, a morning show person because in England it's you know nearly afternoon and it's, right. we need something happening. And I was like, I kid you not. This morning I said you need a DJ in the morning. So I was among and I don't know how many people who auditioned, and I did many many different like I did many practice shows, and then then they gave me the the gig. I am very envious of you because that's one of these, I've been in radio for 30 plus years and that's one of the dreams to do that. And, yeah. and the funny thing is what's unique about it. I was asked to send an air check tape to Sirius XM a few weeks ago. Oh, so wow. if you have any pull over there, can you, uh, can I'll you please mention head. my name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's really cool. That is because um, now you're able, are, okay. So this is the way I'm going to ask the question. Do you promote your own music when you're doing your morning show? 
Not really. I, it makes me cringe. Like I'm one of those people, like I, I can't listen to myself especially in a group of people. I don't like to watch myself on video. Like, so every now and then, because I get my playlists, I can change them around, but like I get my playlists from the, the program director. And every now and then one of my songs is in there. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> and so like, I'll play it. But I always make a joke about it. And I mean, if we're going to be playing a, a show that weekend, I'll be like, hey, if you want to come see me, come, you know, I'll be here. I mean, if we're going to be, yeah. Like if we're going to go on tour, then she she can say I'm going to be on tour. Yeah, right. Comes to me on tour, and 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 that's fine because it means that she. But I try to do it very tastefully because it makes me cringe. I got you. She's, so, <laughs> she's just she's just bashful. That's all so, it is. So the other question I have: Do you do it from your home or do you go into a studio? Yeah, right here is my recording setup. Oh, okay. The back of it. That's why we've got the yeah got the panel. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah, there this is go. her. She has her own studio. This is Studio B. Yeah, this is Studio B where I do radio. <laughs> studio A is where we do music. Studio A is where it's we in have a the, mother drum, the drums and all that stuff. Yeah, and so that's yeah. cool. That really is that 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 is awesome. Oh, that's so, that's actually brand new key right there. She's pointing. Is it? Oh, right there. Okay. Oh, and there's Melanie. Melanie signed that for us too. Okay, that's, that's cool. cool. <laughs> I just realized what's behind us. <laughs> Not that we're going to name drop anymore or anything. Um, (laughs) And also you have Dirty Dancing up there too. Is that? uh... So that was a very, very heavy early influence um, because that soundtrack is incredible. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I used to listen to that soundtrack on repeat. And so it did inform a lot of my musical taste. We've been talking about doing that, covering that whole soundtrack from front to back. Well, you did cover the song, Do You Love Me? Which is a great cover of that, which is fantastic. Um, Now, the one thing I wanted to mention is the kids keep coming in and out, which is perfectly fine. I'm used to that. Um, You also have a decent catalog of Christmas music, which... I never heard of a punk band doing Christmas music before. Well, you know, it just kind of started one year. Um, we we recorded a Christmas song for Blackheart for, okay. for, for Joan. They needed they were putting together a Blackheart Christmas album. They're like, "Can you do a Christmas song?" We said, "Sure, we'll do Santa Baby." You know, so we did Santa Baby. Yeah. And then the next year, it was like, you know what? We should do another Christmas song. <laughs> so we did another Christmas song, and here we are. You know, uh, we have at this point every single year for 13 years, we've done a Christmas song and released it. Uh, we finally put it out as one collection last year. Right. Um, with a Yule Log video. With a Yule I Log saw video. that today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was my genius last minute idea last yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, great. Now we've got even more work. <laughs> but, it was, but it's cool because people can just put it on and, you know, why not? Uh, not so, only is it the Yule Log, you also have the words flashing under the si- screen. Yeah, so if you want to do yeah. a sing along, there you go. No, that's the idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Michael Bublé has one. Why can't we? That's yeah. all, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that that was again it, that in a lot of ways that's like the new record. It's like Rabbit Hole in right. that unintentionally we've just been creating things over time. And then eventually it's like, wait, this could just be a, a release that you just put out, that we, that we put out as itself, you know? So some of the Christmas songs you've done on it are very, they're iconic songs. Like the Darlene Loves uh, Christmas yeah. Baby Please Come Home, which again, Darlene Love does a fantastic version of it, but you guys do too, but it's different. Yeah. And it has anybody ever said anything to you like going, why would you cover something like that? Why would you take away from the original sound? Has anybody criticized uh, you for that? Not no, really. They haven't. They, <laughs> I've never heard that, uh, which is funny because anybody can talk to us at any point online. You know, it's like, if you want to talk right. to us, just go to Twitter and talk. Um, but I do think a lot of them are big asks in terms of the original performance. Okay. Like, to measure up to Darlene Love. To like, measure- it could never be as good as Darlene Love for Mariah Carey. Like, right. Not like, even trying. She's not trying to be better than them. I think she's genuinely just singing them in the way that she would sing them in a shower or, or whatever. You okay. Know? And I'm just happy. 
that she just happens to be being recorded with a mic in front of you. You know, she's not trying to sound like them or or even like uh I'm speaking for you. Yes. But I don't think you're trying to channel Darlene Love. Like no. that's not the intent. No. I think a lot of times you you listen to like a Christmas cover and it sounds mm-hmm. like they were trying to to be that person or something. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I can only be me. Our philosophy is we're not <laughs> we're not theatrically inclined enough to be able to to do anything but our what we do. Yeah. Okay. Like um cause, so cuz I could imagine because I've heard people do Elvis's Blue Christmas and they try to do the the way he says blue. Oh, and oh, you just can't come, yeah, you just can't do that because it's Elvis. Yeah. So how many guys how many guys are in your band? Oh, it's just it's just us and we've had a consistent drummer for the last two years, but it's there have been eleven drummers and to the two of us. No, this is wow. like 13. 13 drummers. Um, just kidding. <laughs> You know, we stopped having permanent drummers back in like 2012 or so. And the reason being is like, we're kind of a self-contained unit in, in terms of our approach, in terms of the creative process, in terms of how much time we dedicate to this. When we mm-hmm. wanted to start a family, we and, knew we would be moving. We are in Florida now. And okay. so it just, it's easier. It's just got to be us. Yeah. So if you go see us on tour, you may see Justin or you may see Ricky or you may see, you know, someone else. But the thing is, we're friends with all of them. Oh, yeah. It's just whoever, you know, it's like, do you ever can do it? Do you want to go on an adventure for three weeks? Oh, okay. And hang out with us and have a blast. And we do one rehearsal before (laughs) before we get on stage the next day every tour. That's it. We'll we'll just like fly into Chicago. We'll do one rehearsal, but we all know each other so well. It's just like, bam, and then then go. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's generally presented in a three piece format. And um, yeah, I play bass and we're cool with that. Yeah, that's cool. I I didn't realize that um, because and and so when you when you do tour, I mean, do you tour all over the country? Do you tour in a certain region? How do you do your touring? Uh, Mostly we, we're doing A markets these days. We do okay. about three two week tours a year. So the usually in spring we hit the Midwest and go down to Texas, and in late summer we'll do the East Coast. You know, from like Cambridge, Boston area, sometimes all the way down to Tampa, and then we usually get out to California and we do you know Sacramento down to San Diego. We'll try I mean, and hit Arizona too. She's speaking pre-COVID plan. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I got you. I understand that. But um, this... and we we hit the UK and Europe every other year. We were we were doing. So, so how yeah. big's your following in the UK? Pretty big. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I mean, if you look at the, I mean, you can judge things based on like traffic, like internet traffic. Mm-hmm. You can judge things based on merchandise, like where you're shipping things. And I'd say the UK accounts for a good like 25, 30, 35% of our audience um, because they just like rock and roll. And, right. And, yeah. and the style of rock and roll that we do is something that I think resonates over there. And we've been lucky. Um, we've gotten some great opener slots in the UK that have introduced us to a lot of fans that would just like our stuff generically you know, easily you, you like go see the opening band and then the, they like actually like us <laughs> yeah well <laughs> no. and that that means a lot that's that's true that really is um I, my question is when are you coming to pittsburgh because i'd love to see you are you, you know, coming to pittsburgh soon we used to play pittsburgh every tour we used to yeah. i don't remember at what one point it just kind of is in this like perfect zone of not being reached by the surrounding tour yes i and i i hear that from people i've interviewed recently i've heard that that yeah. if they go to the east coast they're going to philadelphia and people don't realize philadelphia is like six hours away from pittsburgh yeah and yeah. it's it's such a far trip so i understand yeah. where you're coming yeah, from and, and on, on the other side it's like usually we focus we sometimes get as far east as cleveland okay but many Rarely. times many times we'll just columbus is kind of it that's it you know and so oh heck i'd make the drive to columbus that's only two and a half hours from where i'm sitting yeah we'll be there in mar so okay yeah i mean you have a good point we wish we could go to like every town (laughs) (laughs) but at this point we've kind of established like a thing where okay we're going to do the midwest run and it's going to be right we can count on them and we know whatever 
because yeah. you just have so many plates you're spinning so many plates when you're planning a tour and you're trying to make it work and we do two or three weeks at a time because we do take the kids with us oh yeah. really yeah how is that taking two kids of that age and does the dog come too no no, 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 not, no. <laughs> the dog is a new addition but the, okay. the old dog he used the to old dog used to when we had us. one kid yeah okay. so one kid and one dog i'm not taking two kids in the <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um it's it's challenging but at the same time you know we had been touring for a long time before we had kids and it had gotten kind of well, empty feeling a lot of the time you know we we're playing a lot of the same venues it was the right. same people it was it was just a lot of the same stuff and it was getting a little less inspiring. And so then as soon as we could bring the kids along, it kind of changed it in a way, you know, and now I, I get to visit places with them during the day. We get to show them. Speaking of the kids up here. Yeah. Yeah. We get to to show them what we do and, you know, like they come on stage for one song, if it's an all ages gig and it's not super late. You know, they'll because we tour in an RV or bus. Um, okay. And so they're always at the venue, but outside. Right. Um, and so, you know, we'll we'll do like a family jam where our son comes and we we tune his guitar like open so that, you know, he can just kind of strum and we write a right, song on right. stage each night. And our daughter, she comes and she likes sing. She was very, very bashful the last few times. So it'll be funny to see how it is now. But, you know, it it's it's grown and changed in a way that makes me feel inspired again. And That's cool. I'm very grateful for that because something needed to change. It was just like, how many nights in a row am I going to get drunk and play the same set at the same place where I've used the same bathroom for the last seven years? <laughs> like, right. it's just like every stop became, I even knew the truck stops, you know, and now it's all new again. That's cool. So. Um, and speaking of your kids, your son is actually singing on one of your songs. All I want for Christmas yes. is my two front teeth. So whose yes. idea was that? Was that yours? Was that his? Um, you know, he, I, I've had him sing on a few things, you know, like he, he wants to be involved and he likes being in a recording environment because he, he, he's been doing it since he was a baby, you know, right. I, I have pictures of him from when he was like this big and his recording. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, we've just been doing little things here and there where like, you know, he'll write a little tidbit and add a synthesizer or do something. I had him, he, there is a version of Johnny B. Good that he did. Oh, really? Yeah, we haven't put that out on where he asked to do it. He asked to do it. The song that he's been asking for, which I just not sure how I feel about it. He wants to do Sexy and 17 by the Stray Cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're eight. <laughs> And he's like, what's that? It just means cute, right? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> so, he, oh, and he wants to do the bird song, but up a bird. Oh, bird. yeah. Uh, From the so, trash one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that one just, you know, he wanted to do a song. And I was like, you know, we could do this song. And, yeah. and he did it. And I was, I was, I was very proud of him because he, he actually sang it. And I think you can expect more from him in the future. Okay. For both of them. I mean, they're, they're going to... They like they'll, it. They'll, they'll replace We're certainly us. not encouraging it in a... We will do what they ask, but we don't so, ask. Yeah. So are you going yeah. to create the, the 21st century version of the Partridge family then? <laughs> That's <laughs> We get asked that a lot. You know, yeah. our, our concept is eventually they'll just replace us. Okay. So we, you know, one day this project this band will just will, it just won't be us it'll just be them and it'll be like oh why when did that happen <laughs> right um but you know honestly i feel like if uh if they want to do it they can if they but we don't we're the last thing we're going to be is like dadager and momager and no gotcha. trying to make them they're not in music lessons we're trying to do piano but then covid happened but they'll learn piano but not rock and roll you know i think <laughs> rock and roll should be something you do because you really feel it and not because you're you're pushed and probably to piss off your parents not please them. <laughs> yeah that's how a rock and roll is about <laughs> so if, if they come around and they decide they want to rock they have every tool available to them to do it and if they don't if they want to have a more stable lifestyle Right. It doesn't involve like jumping from one thing to another and never knowing where you're going to land and kind of just relying on the universe to take care of you, then they can do this. 
<laughs> which which I under, I understand that. Kelly, I have a question for you because I came yeah. across it, and when I looked at it, I'm going, that isn't the song I remember. And okay. then I had to read it again, and it was I saw mommy biting Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, so that's a really strange one. That's a good example of one where we were asked to write something to uh to something that already to existed. a book. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So it's a, a kid's Christmas book okay. and it's I Saw Mommy Biting Santa Claus about zombies. And it was actually written by this guy, Matt, who is involved in, um, what's the zombie show? The super popular zombie show? Uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Walking Dead. So he has a show after The Walking Dead. He's a guest on it. And I met him because I went to an open call, just a minute, on Craigslist where they were asking for a scientist who was interested in zombies um, and could do some singing or something. I can't remember what it was. It was one of those weird LA Craigslist things. And we met at a hotel in a conference room and that thing never happened, but he was like, hey, you think you guys would wanna do this song for me? Mm -hmm. And so we did. And so it's like a companion to a book that you can buy okay. anywhere you can buy books. And That's it's. It's kind of a creepy book, but it's <laughs> it, like I said, because I'm used to seeing I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus yeah. and I played it. And for some reason, I didn't see the word biting. I saw and then I'm listening to it going, <laughs> wait a minute. That's not what I thought it was. But yeah, it's really, so it's really actually I think it's cute because it does do the zombie. And especially if you watch the video with it, yeah. you understand. So the video are stills of the book pages. <laughs> okay. And he actually had all of the. um he had the words written so we just did the music to his words and tried to edit oh. and things. so okay. we didn't write the words to that it, it's it, okay and, and, and that makes that makes sense yeah so um anything else you have coming up any projects any albums where you're touring um, so next tomorrow we oh my goodness gracious um tomorrow we're playing a christmas show online oh really um yeah, we're going to do like a Christmas sing along around the Christmas tree. Um, us and the kids on stage at dot com. So that that's December 22nd. I'm not sure. Right. When this will be. Okay. Um, it'll probably be on YouTube if anybody wants to go back and watch it. Um, we've got the new album is officially coming out January 21st. Now it got pushed supply chain things, I guess. Right. Um, I, I saw that on your one post, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'm I'm writing with my my friend in another band, Jarrett from Bowling for Soup, and I have a band called Jarrett and Kelly, and we're gonna start a new album in January, so that is pretty cool. And then we start touring, hopefully, God willing, in March. We will be in the Midwest. Um, we're going overseas. I think it's in April, okay. and then we will do hopefully the East Coast in summer, and then then we're doing the Great Rock and Roll Sea Cruise in August. Oh, that sounds like fun. It's going to be amazing. It starts in Athens, Greece. It goes to Mykonos, Greece, and Izmir, Turkey. And it's Buzzcocks, Dictators. It's basically all of our punk rock heroes. Yeah, like oh. it, it's going to be really cool. So, At least the ones that are still around. Yeah, I mean, it's Buzzcocks <laughs> without Pete Shelley, which is strange. But but Pete's partner will be there to hang out with us. So that'll yeah. be good. <laughs> we, we toured with Buzzcocks in the past, and they're 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 great. They, they really helped us out. Like, yeah, but we're going to start a new Dolly Rots record in the coming months. So we'll okay. probably launch that project. And the way we usually do them is we do a pre-sale with a bunch of fun, weird add-ons. And, and that way we give the fans updates as we create mm -hmm. it. So they get to watch the whole thing kind of be born. Like basically we're going to put out a message saying we're making a new record. If you want to pre-order it now, awesome. It's not written yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but our fans know the drill at this point so yeah, they, and they know they're going to get a good record in the end right but literally we're we're going to we're going to launch it and make it available before it's written and then they get to watch us make it now yeah. we have no idea what it's going to be like <laughs> okay well at least you're being honest and upfront that's yeah. fantastic well guys thank you very much for spending time with me and it was one of the most interesting interviews i've ever done with dogs and kids and everything else <laughs> and, 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 and I really appreciate <laughs> our life is very chaotic right yeah. now. This is no, this is normal. You got, you got a little, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, 
you guys have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and Thank hopefully you. You. when you do make it on tour again, we can catch up and talk to you then, and uh, maybe I'll get to see you in concert. That cool. would be great. Awesome. That Thank good. you very much. Thank right. you so much. Thanks a lot, Bill. Hey, a big thank you goes out to Kelly and Lewis for joining me here on One on One with Bill Alexander. It was a blast. I had a wonderful time. It was great to have the kids there. It was great to have the dog there. And it was great to be able to talk to them today. I'll be sharing their information in the podcast description and also on the video podcast. And you'll be able to go to their website, which is the dollyrots.com. But if you want more information, you're watching us on Fayette TV, all you have to do is go to my website, oneononewithbillalexander.com, and you'll be able to find out more information about their new album, their touring schedule, and everything like that. So a big thank you goes out to the Dolly Rots, and a big thank you to you for watching us today here on One on One with Bill Alexander. Thank you for listening to One on One with Bill Alexander. One on One with Bill Alexander is a million dollar baby production. For more information, go to BillAlexander.net.